Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. We got a ton of stuff to go over, so let's just jump into it, shall we? So first of all, I always check the comments. I think I have the best comment section on YouTube today, and that's, of course, positive in the middle and trolls. I My favorites are trolls, but uh, that's, that's another video. There was a comment, and it made a lot of sense. This is from MMA9Fan. He says, why would you say it's time to buy a month before a cut when history shows that crash starts after they start cutting. I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. I need to talk about that. And what he was talking about, of course, the video from yesterday is a link in the description where we talked about that as a golden opportunity, potentially. Uh, Jerome Powell is going to be uh, talking at the uh, Wyoming Summit uh, and it's our Jackson Hole Summit. And it, when he talks about this, it's going to give the thumbs up or thumbs down for a rate cut. And when usually that happens, the money printer goes on, everything's happy and great. Risk on FS. Assets are doing good. But MMA Fund has an actual point. <clears throat> When we see rate cuts, usually what we what we see over time is that that's when things start to collapse because usually the Fed doesn't get it right. There is no soft landing. And they're saying they're going to do it, but it's anybody's guess, right? Also, but I will say, so far, Jerome Powell has been in office, and like we talked about yesterday, not doing a bad job. We're not in collapse. We're not in uh, de uh, desolate wasteland uh, like in some kind of uh, futuristic movie. We're doing pretty good thus so far. Not everybody's doing fantastic, but could be much, much worse. So what I want to take a look at was this Fed funds rate and see if there's any truth of that. And there is, but there's some caveats. And when we're, when we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about the inversion curve. And then we're going to talk about a leading indicator from an industry, which is a nonpartisan industry, which shows that we were probably already in a recession uh, beforehand and we're coming out of it, which is crazy to think. And that's what makes me pretty bullish. So here's we go. <clears throat> Federal funds rate. And you can see right here for the target range, and we're going all the way back to 1985. You can see that, uh, you know, there was an economic boom. This was uh, during the, prior, the time of Reagan, doing pretty good after he uh, beat out uh, Jimmy Carter uh, for that in the 1970s and 80s, and this was his first term. Things run up like a rocket ship, and of course, Fed started to uh, increase rates, and they cut, and there is no recession. There was no recession at this point, and you can see everything in the gray here. Are these? Uh, little uh, white transparent. This is when recessions start. This is when they actually end. So it went down and then it came up. And now here we are in 89. And then we there was a pause because the Fed didn't know what actually they were supposed to do. And then boom, they started to cut and it didn't happen right away. This is in May of 89 going all the way down to July 1990. That's when we got the actual recession and we see just how far it plummets. And then we go over here. And actually to break this down even, even further, let's just do this. Um, as we know, I've been talking about this probably three or four times now because everybody gets, uh, they get a little freaked out when we say the R word, recession. And I remind everybody, the recession is not the economy. The economy actually recovers later than the market. The market recovers first, then comes the economy. And on average for a recession, it usually lasts about 10 months. And usually on average, as far as a recovery, the actual markets recover in about six to seven months. Then it takes another three or four for the actual market to actually recover or the uh, economy, I should say. So when you take a look at that, when you hear about recession, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. We've gone through this a couple of times. So let's just take a look and really go back because what I try to do with these charts, these graphs, I try to take a look at, okay, when did they pause and when did they cut and when did a recession start? So again, in 89, they paused for quite a bit. This was June 89, this is going back all the way to the beginning of 89. So about five or six months, then they started to cut and the market actually did pretty well and then went off. And then of course we came into a recession uh, months and months later. Actually, this is from January 89 to August of 1990. So roughly a year later. So that's one of the outliers you could say. Now, if we take a look, now this one does add up. This is in July, 2000. Again, we had a, a run up, there was a pause the pause and we took a, a drop because the rates cut. The Fed said, okay, something's wrong. We broke something. Sorry, we messed up on that one. And then roughly three or four months, we had a recession. It took six months for the market to, to bottom. Then you had two months and, the, and then it, it uh, takes off and the economy starts to recover and comes out of recession. Again, these are all late indicators. Same thing over here. Now this one nailed it pretty good. This is what was the great recession. We came over here to early 2006, uh, excuse me, early 2007. There was just a long pause. Fed th figures out, oh, this housing market crash, this is a bad thing. We should probably cut because we let this uh, go a little bit too long. They cut, too late, suckers. And then before you know it, you had 15 months 
as the market just got bamboozled. And then, of course, the market uh, came back. And then the economy uh, took three months later. And then lastly was, and I don't really like this, this example, but it is the uh, coronavirus. And we can just see that there was a long pause, then a cut. And then this was a cut in August or September, roughly, of no, August 2019. And then we didn't see a recession until coronavirus in March. And who knows, this is 2020, who knows this is actually what happened. So even though we talk about, yes, when there is a cut, it means that the Fed did something wrong. Maybe not wrong, maybe it was just inevitable. And they're trying to manipulate a little bit and to kind of bring things back to uh, center. However, there's a couple of good, uh, good notes here. First of all, Treasury yield. When things start to invert, and we're taking a look at the 10 and three, as far as treasuries, when it starts to invert, it's not, a, it's not so much of a deal, but it's a warning indicator. Because once it uninverts and goes back to base, then we see a recession. And we saw that back in coronavirus days. We saw this all the way back here in 2007. We saw this all the way back here in 2001. And we saw it, it should take a little bit of time here, in the 90s. And right now, you will notice we are not there yet. Doesn't mean we can't rock it up. I'm just saying it, not happening yet. Also, I'd also like to bring your attention to this. This is the S&P 500 ROI after the 10 and three yield curve inversion to the next inversion. What do you notice? You notice that, yeah, the recession is not the greatest thing of all time, but once it inverts to the next inversion, so it'll go invert, uninvert. What do you notice for as far as the ROI? It's up and to the right. And that's going back in the last three, 2019, 2000, 2089, seven and 2009. And we need to see that, yes, this is where it goes. So if you have a long enough time horizon, you shouldn't really worry too much. And here it comes to the crux of the argument of what I'm trying to say. Two things. Maybe we already went through a recession. There was a great video from Nick over at Coin Bureau, and I linked that in the description. It was about, uh, about a week ago, I think nine or 10 days. And he lays out the point of, and this might actually be in line with what you may be thinking, I don't know. But it seems like we may have already gone through part of a recession. I know people talk about, well, the GDP is healthy. Well, it's a funny thing because they keep revising those numbers, do they not? Especially when we take a look at the unemployment rates, we take a look at GDP, we take a look at uh, initial claims. All of a sudden it gets, it's way, way different than what they initially put out. That's not new. I'm just saying, it seems like we're kind of looking backwards. So Nick here, showing the gun show, uh -huh. uh, actually makes a pretty good case for that we've already gone through a recession. And lastly, which will lead me up to the indicator, this piece, which makes me feel pretty good because if we're not going to a recession, I'm not saying we're not, we are. Here's what we've got. U.S. leading economic indicators continue to fall, no longer signal a recession. Leading U.S. economic indicators are still pointing to a slowdown. I think we can all agree on that one, right? Unemployment has gone up a little bit. GDP has decreased, but it no longer is signaling a recession. Data from the Conference Board, a nonpartisan and nonprofit research organization, and that's key, nonpartisan, nonprofit research organization. If you got a partisan type of uh, in indicators and you take a look at a poll, you're like, oh, well, this is good for this party or that party. Nonpartisan, nonprofit. And this showed Tuesday that it's not going in that direction. Organizations leading economic indicators or LEI declined 0.6% in July to 100.4 following June's 0.2% drop. The measure peaked in the second quarter of 2022, which is a funny thing. Remember in 2021, when everybody offloaded all their stocks, all their crypto, Peter Thiel, I'm looking at you, and uh, everything just collapsed in 2022. And also we had our collapse, right? FTX, Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, list can go on. Second quarter of 2022. So it's been falling ever since that low point. The LEI, if you're curious, I was. LEI comprises several forward-looking indicators, not prior-looking indicators, forward-looking indicators, such as average weekly hours in manufacturing, average weekly initial claims for jobless insurance, ISM new orders index, stock prices, and leading credit in in index. And this is from Justin Zabinska, La Monica nailed it, senior manager of business cycle indicators. She states, the LEI continues to fall on a month over month basis, but the six month annual growth rate no longer signals recession ahead. This is the data that we have. I understand where you think to yourself, well, this indicator says, this indicator says, they're all indicators. All models are wrong 
and some are useful. I'm just giving you a separate look or a different look of what everybody's talking about, which is there's going to be a recession. I thought it was a recession. If I take a look at this, I'm like, eh, maybe not. And this is why a dollar cost average. And this is why I talk about the things I do. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows where things are going. We can just take a look and do a, our best educated guess, guesswork, and kind of go from there. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I'm a little bullish, more so than I usually am. I have to apologize. So let me bring you back down to earth with a little negativity, shall we? Anyhow, you asked for it. The SEC rejects the CBOE's filings for a Solana ETF. Want, want. So this is a following of conversations between the SEC and issuers over its concerns that Solana should be regarded as a security. Well, who, who determines that? That's a friend of the show, Jerry, Gary Gensler. And of course, they talk about these are from conversations between the SEC and issuers. This could be substantiated or unsubstantiated. But this view does match what the SEC has asserted in court filings in multiple cases. Now, we can go back to those court cases and go, well, they lost. They do lose. The SEC does lose. But guess who really loses? That's the US taxpayer and the crypto investor. Guess who pays the salary for the SEC? We do. Guess who uses those funds to screw us in our investments? The SEC does. So even if they lose, they win. And when they win, they really win. So I just wanna remind everybody that uh, the game is rigged and this is one of the few ways to get out. But I will say, well, what did this do with the price of Solana? Not much. In the last 24 hours, it's down 1.2%, 2.6% for the seven days. So if you're a Solana bag holder like myself, but I also own BNB and Ethereum and Bitcoin, a little XRP, a bunch of ton coin, Dogecoin, so it's just one of those days. This is like the worst day or one of the worst months in TradFi. Solana going down 1.3% 24 hours. We call that a Tuesday. So whatever. But uh, I just want to balance things out. And also, um, here's a little, little update. There's been a lot of talk on X. And I even posted about this because I thought it was funny. There's rumors that uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is running for uh, president here in the United States, we don't know what's going on. Uh, there was a state of that she was eyeing Gary Gensler for the treasury. And this made the rounds and it went uh, pretty viral. And I just said, this is, I, I just said this, I go, wouldn't this be the, the ultimate FU to all the crypto investors if she actually did this? And then I linked to this to some article. And uh, some people are like, you got to take that down because that's totally fake. I'm like, hey, I just said if, if it is. But apparently it has been uh, debunked. So if you see that on X, please let everybody know. No, this is not the case. However, uh, I just want to ask everybody for help. If you hear any, any, any positive stories about on the Democratic side, about how they're trying to embrace and work with crypto, Bitcoin, digital assets, please send it my way because I'm very, it's very hard to find anything positive. I can find a lot of things positive for RFK Jr. I, got, I can find a lot of things for Donald Trump. I, it's hard for me to find anything with DNC. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just missing things, but uh, you know that'd be great. That way I can give you guys balance, right? Just like we talked about. So lastly, before we get into a little Q&A, some more negativity, but how you can deal with it. Losing funds. Uh, Shan Haynes is the ex-CEO of a bank who caused his bank to fail after falling for crypto scam gets 24 years in prison. This actually led the bank to fail at a complete loss of equity for investors. Here's what happened. Between May and July 2023, Haynes used his position as CEO of the bank. I don't know the, what the bank's name is to make 11 transfers of the bank's funds worth over $47 million to a crypto wallet involved in a pig butchering scheme. If you don't know what a pig butchering scheme is, it's essentially scammers reach out to you and they do, they do a slow play. They kind of fatten you up like they do with livestock and pigs. And they go, hey, I think I know you. Hey, I think this is, this is somebody that I'd like to be interested in talking to. And then you talk to them for over like weeks, months, however long it takes. And they just subtly start to talk to you about uh, crypto and how it's good. And then even you might make uh, an investment and they actually do an ROI and you actually get something back, something small. And then you start to do a little more and a little more. And before you know it, you're $47 million in debt with all of your customers' funds from the bank that they trusted you with and you get screwed over. Why do I say this? I say this because 
there is a way out of this. If you, on crypto, you don't leave anything on exchanges. There's a reason why I have those rules, right? Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything is scam until proven otherwise. Don't use exchanges or don't leave things on exchanges. Don't use leverage. And uh, of course, take profits along the way. If you are worried about these exchanges falling or even your bank screwing things up, why don't you just learn how to use cold storage? I use a ledger. I use a tangent. There's a link in the description, 10% off. You don't have to use the affiliate link. You can go right to tangent. Hopefully you find the right site and uh, just look at that 10% off. But I just wanted to remind everybody that you have control in your sphere of influence and it doesn't have to be like this. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.